uh, Rachel uh, Ron was uh, just uh, uh, saying that um, it sounded like we had a lot of complaints about the 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 the, the lettering, which I I mean I kind of agree. Yeah, we were all kind of feeling it a little bit on some of the 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 uh, you know, kind of the growing pains. I, I I'll tell you what, like I reread the whole chapter, <clears throat> you know, this week, and especially you know I've spent a lot of time with the second half, which is what we're we're going to talk about. Complaints um, about the lettering? Is that what you said? Well, just like the symbols, you know what I mean? Like, you know, trying to remember like what all the... Oh, those uh, letters. Yeah, the A and yeah, the B. Like, yeah, like, you know, the, the oh. logical, um, you know, symbols and, and stuff like that, you know. I mean, which is true. Like, if you don't, I don't really, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, but I don't do this stuff, you know. I don't think about some of these types of probability relationships, like, in exactly sort of the way that they're presented. So. Anyway, um, yeah, you don't, and you don't have to use letter. I mean, I don't know why they did that because you can always just use, you can write in whatever you want. I remember I took a yeah. course one time. Well, I guess that was quantum mechanics, but the idea was you could write probability and you just put whatever you want in the parentheses. <laughs> you put like a whole sentence. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it gets better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's, I mean, this week was better. I mean, I, I find like okay, all cool. of this stuff, you know, whether you're still a student or like you're like me, um, you know, I'm a million years old. Um, so yeah, um, one thing that I found myself sort of thinking about a lot is just, I mean, cause you know, it's like as a you know, data scientist, statistician, whatever, we talk a lot about maximum likelihood, we talk about log likelihood, we talk about all these different things. And, you know, um, it's actually been a really interesting experience for me to try to like buff up my understanding of, you know, likelihood versus probability, because oftentimes, you know, we don't really realize how different they are. So uh, it's kind of hard to see, I found this, I, I did some digging and there's a cool article on psychologicalscience.org, which is, I don't, if you're a psychologist, you probably know what that is, but yeah, um, psychologists are very increasingly becoming Bayesians. Um, but this article had a couple cool things um, that I thought were worth just adding to the discussion. So probability attaches to possible results, likelihood attaches to hypotheses. Um, so possible results are mutually exclusive and exhaustive hypotheses, unlike results are neither mutually exclusive nor exhaustive. So I really like this, right? So it kind of, um, cause you know, obviously the, the, the big distinction we're getting into is that probability obviously always sums to one because there's only, you know, the, once you know what all the possible outcomes are, you should know, you know, what all, you know, how to get to, you know, to cover the, you know, any possible outcomes. So Ergo, the probability sums to one, but we don't get that with um, likelihood, hence why it's not exhaustive. I don't know if this this helps, but it kind of helped me a little bit. Like, um, and then just this whole idea of this this figure, which was not from this article, I found it some other place, but I really liked it. It's like kind of thinking about the directionality of the relationship. So, anyway. Um, so then in the second half, we get into this whole idea of, you know, uh, building a Bayesian model for, you know, random variables. And specifically, we talk about the random variable in the example being pi, which equals Kasparov's chances of you know, winning any particular game in a rematch against Deep Blue. And I also thought it was interesting that, um, you know, they mentioned this, and, and this is a common assumption, right, in Bayesian modeling. Um, it may not be warranted, though. I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's a whole, there's a whole like literature about, you know, sort of, um, well, not necessarily great uh, literature on like the hot hand and like you know this idea of, you know, if you win game one, you know, the probability of you winning game two has got to change, right? But of course, we're not doing that here. We're saying, regardless of what happens in game one, in the probability of, um, or the chances, I should say, of, of um, I don't want to use probability when we're talking about likelihood stuff. Um, you know the the, um, the 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 likelihood of you know winning any particular game is the same, right? Despite you know what uh, what happens in previous trials. So um, and also I'll, I put this at the end of you know my slides, but obviously you know winning um, you know one or six one anywhere from one to zero, zero I should say zero to six games. You know this is is in effect like you know a binomial event so um something to, to keep in mind 
uh, coming back to this like normalizing constant, this was you know another thing we complained about a little bit last week, which I I think we all shared. This is you know what what is this normalizing constant? So um, you know the second half of the book has I think Ronald you even said this like um, does a better job of sort of laying this out. But I like some of the, the some of this is just verbiage that I stole from the book. So it's used to balance you know the prior and the likelihood. So it's you know obviously it's the denominator. Um, but uh, its only purpose is to normalize the posterior probability so that they sum to one. So this is from the, the text. This is um, you know the, the normalized posterior probability. So if you add up all of these numbers, they add up to one. But uh, not so much with um, you know this the right one because we haven't um, this hasn't been normalized with the normalizing constant. So you can see here. If we were to add up all of these numbers, they would not, in fact, equal to um, to one. So, any like, you know, so far, I, I mean, anything that I'm missing, like that anybody wants to, to speak on, or anything that anybody like took from this part. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool to mention that even between normalized and unnormalized, the proportions are still the same, still patterns, yes. the same pattern. Yeah, so it doesn't, so even if we don't normalize, we can still take stuff from this right graph because it still is proportionally, we're seeing, you know, sort of, um, you know, what the, you know, what the difference, um, you know, sort of, pro, uh, what the, you know, sort of, Posteriors are, but they're, yeah, they're not. They're not going to sum to one, but we still get stuff out of that. Robert, Ron, anything you guys want to speak on? Yeah. Nope. Okay. Um. Then this, I don't know. This was like, sort of confusing to me. I don't know if anyone else felt like this. This idea of proportionality, because so, and this once again, Israel just taking strict, strict from the book. Um, since the function of uh, y is merely a normalizing constant, which does not depend on pi, the posterior uh, uh, um, probability mass function uh, is proportional to the product of uh, pi and likelihood of pi given y. So, um, yeah, I, I guess. I guess this is just another way of saying what we just experienced in the previous slide, which is normalizing it so that it equals to one. And so that, you know, instead of, you know, as we see here um, in the, the right uh, slide, you know, that obviously this is a very different number from that. And so, yeah, we want, you know, this is the, the whole idea of proportionality is this um, kind of showing numerically the, um, you know, sort of the, the proportional nature of these various outcomes. Um, I also, another complaining about symbols, I had forgotten what uh, the little um, missing half eight kind of thing. So there you go. Um, and then, you know, the last thing that, you know, I don't really do a lot of sort of stuff with like binomial models in my own work. So, um, yeah, so I, what I thought we could do is uh, maybe work on some of the exercises as a way to kind of, you know, um, you know, we did that last week. I thought that was, was pretty successful. But um, you know, obviously, in, in the case of the binomial model, we're trying to predict the number of wins for Kasparov, um, given a, some kind of model pi here. Um, so obviously, you know, the number of, of, of trials and then what the model is and, and the, what pi is goes into that, um, into this, this, this formula. Um, so uh, if you open your book, to, did anyone get a chance to, just before I a, um, ask any of this stuff, did anyone get a chance to actually work on these at all? I, I'm assuming probably not. So, um, so for 2.3, I worked on some of them. I don't remember which ones now, but yeah, yeah I, know, I know the feeling. I kind of, yeah, you kind of. There's also I also found a website that has the answers to a lot of these, which you know, oh. I mean, I'm not sure they're by the author, but um, the, these the exercise 2.3, there's no answers unfortunately, but um, 
so yeah, so for each uh, y variable below, which I'll, I'll show in just a second on my screen, determine whether y is a binomial, right? And so um, can anybody, just before I, you know, in their own words, make sure that we so make sure we're all on the same page. What does it mean for a, a variable to be an outcome to be binomial or like to be in a binomial model? Can somebody put it in their own words? It's like there are two possible outcomes. Two possible outcomes. For, for Y to take on with like given, like with right. some probability attached to each of those outcomes. Yeah. So there's a dichotomous, you know, or either or type of an outcome. And then what's the second piece that's, you know, sort of. I think they have to be independent, right? They have to be independent, but they have to be a series, right? So they have to have a number of this, 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 yeah. this piece of, of like, so let me just give you an example. So like in the medicine, a lot of times we, we model mortality. Right. So um, and, and typically we do this with, you know, um, a logistic regression or some kind where, you know, we're, there's only one outcome. Right. We don't we don't die a bunch of times. Right. So a lot of times in um, hopefully not, um, <laughs> you know, a lot of times in. Um, you know, it's not it's not unusual to have a binomial or I should say a dichotomous outcome that's, you know, yes or no kind of a thing, but it's singular. Right. In this case, we're not just doing you know, a singular event, we're actually modeling a, a series of events. I don't know. I don't know if this is helpful to anybody, but it, it, it's something that I think about. All right. Um, oh, thanks. I don't want this. I want, oh, okay. Um, so, oh, let me get to the exercises. Okay, so for two, three, we're trying to decide whether or not each of these y variables is binomial. So at a certain hospital, the, an average number of babies are born each hour. Let y be the number of babies born between uh, 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. tomorrow. Is this a binomial outcome? Yes or, or, or no, and why or why not? My take on it was no, and why not? Because I didn't think the number of babies born each hour was independent. But I could be convinced otherwise. But I was thinking they're not independent because people, you know, hospitals don't like people don't go at midnight. They'll be wait till the next morning or whatever. There's the hour seems to matter. I think in some ways. But now I can't make concrete. But I had that's what that was my thinking. That's a, that's actually a really cool um, thought. Actually, I think I agree. Um, Anyone else had a take on that one? Yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking that it, it wasn't binomial, but mostly because it feels like we're trying to model like a count, right? And not a like a dichotomous um, target. So like that was yeah. kind of my thinking why it would at least be, yeah. um, you know, not binomial. Right, right. Um, oh yeah, that's a really good point though. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I it's that. like you, you think about a series of trials, like, you know, coin flips, right? So each coin yeah. flip actually occurs, and then there's one of two outcomes. If a baby isn't born, it's like, you know, I mean, there's no, like, I mean, I guess you could be like, okay, we have a series of potential babies being born. Maybe that's, maybe the, there is a way to do this, right? So mm -hmm. we say, okay, we've got 50 babies. So we have 50 or I don't know, maybe like 50 babies and we're trying to figure out how many are born between nine and 10, then I guess, but yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I, yeah, you're right, it's more like a Poisson process if it was yeah. at the end of the hour. Exactly, it's a, so, it's a count, it's mm -hmm. not a series of trials. That would be my guess. I guess in the back of my mind, I was thinking like, oh, in this, every every like minute, there is like a, some probability of a baby on board or something like that. Exactly. I don't know why, yeah. that's like. <laughs> no, I actually like that strange thing. way to think <laughs> about it. I've never thought about that, but <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Like, How about this? But if you take the time interval small enough, I guess you can approximate that way. But yeah. 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 Good point. Yeah. What about the second one? This one's actually pretty cool, right? So we actually know how many um, tulips were planted. And then, you know, so we have a time frame. We also have um, a model, you know, uh, prior, right? So. Um, is this binomial? I would say yes. Um, Rachel, what do you mostly, think? Yeah. 
now you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> I mean, that's what that's your, yeah, I used to be a teacher and you're still a student. So it's like, you know, this is, this is what we were meant to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just tease them. Well, I think wouldn't it just follow the same argument with the babies too? That it's not a yes or no, unless. Well, I mean, I was thinking it is though a binary because like we have this like what this prior of there's a ninety percent chance of you know a tulip blooming right or sorry right. to a plant and fall a ninety percent chance of blooming in spring so I guess that's like each individual tulip has a ninety percent chance um, of blooming in spring and then we plant twenty seven tulips and then for me then it's like. Um, it, then it's either that it either blooms or it doesn't bloom, right? Yeah. And then we would just say that here is like the proportion of them that bloomed. Yeah. Um, which I think that would then make it binomial. Um, yeah. I'd be curious if anyone disagrees or is. I, you know, I agree. I, I wrote down. I I wrote down binomial twenty seven comma zero point nine would be that. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel, maybe this will help. Um, so this is the formula. And so for us to have a binomial model, we have to have a number of trials. You're not showing have have... anything. You're, you're not oh, showing, uh, oh sorry. It's not showing? Oh, OK. Um, you're, not, you're not sharing at the moment. Uh-oh. Hold on. You, I meant you to failed sharing. <laughs> yeah. Sharing is caring. All right, how about now? Go. Yeah, good. Yeah, so I mean, one thing that I think is important to, to note is, you know, do we have a number of trials, right? A number of trials that can be yes or no, right? That yet something happened or didn't happen. And then also we have some kind of probability or well, um, uh, some yeah. kind of, yeah. So um, uh, you need these two things basically that helps, but how about now? Can you still see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. Sorry, I'm on the way. So yeah, I would say this is a binomial model because we have a num we have 27 trials, right? That can either bloom or not bloom. I, by the way, I totally see like um, how you would think. We don't have any information on, about you know what the you know the probability of um, you know how many babies would be born you know between this time. But give, we don't have any priors in the, in, in A. Uh, we do here, right? So um, that would be my guess. This, see, I, I still don't understand like what the, because each time they try out for the television show, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, Alaska has a 17%. So we're talking about Alaska, the state of, of succeeding. Uh, let uh, the number I of was a person. I, don't know. I know, I know, maybe, I don't know. But then, then, then it's like uh, a number of times, maybe it, so it's, a, it's a there. So I don't know who the there is, but whatever. So is this by no they are. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. what, what, what do you all think? Binomial or not binomial? We know something about the, the, the priors. We also I mean, know it's I mean, independent. Yeah, because they said it. I mean, you're right. I mean, normally I think there's no way it's independent because you fail one time, then you're probably not going to succeed the, the second time. But they specifically said each time 17%. Yeah, but also there's something not by knowing about because once you succeed, you're gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna be doing it again, right? Yeah, I think that maybe be not by knowing because once you succeed one time, there's no like, oh, okay, come back and try again. Like, oh, wait a minute, yeah, no, no longer. It's a right. This it's, is really like, like a I survival just analysis. That. Really, yeah. this is like it's almost like because this is almost like time to event because once you hit a one, you know, for uh, uh, succeeding there's no point so yeah this is not a i mean there is, and I'll, here's another takeaway unless it's I mean, alaska the state and then you know i thought <laughs> I it was a person i, I yeah, want to say it's you know i'm gonna google this now because i feel like it might be alaska might be a person <laughs> so, yeah here's another thing we don't know how many trials there are i mean i guess it doesn't really matter right because we know that you know maybe the last one will be successful right so the, nope, the probability yep, they, are, they are a drag queen yeah yeah, so we don't really know. So I would say this is a non-binomial. Does that make sense, Rachel? To you, why that's different? I believe me. Like, I, I mean, for each of these, uh, it's it's not. Some of these are not cut and dried for sure. I think it's fair to say D is not a binomial, right? Right. 
Because first of all, we don't even have a, 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 a an outcome that's a success non success type of thing. It's this is, uh, you know, this is a different type of random variable, right? I mean, you're you know you can be late by you know five minutes or five hours. Um, why is the probability that your friends will throw you a surprise party, even though you said you hate being the center of attention and just want to go out to eat? Again, it's like not a multiple event there. Yeah. Exactly. That's just like it's a conditional probability. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here's another. This 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 last one is um, it's pretty great, right? You invite sixty people to your pie day party, none of which none of them know each other. That's a that's a that's an important piece of information. I think Ron Ron would probably pick up on that. Um, and each of whom has an eighty percent chance of showing up. But why be the number of total number of guests at your party? Is so what do we think? I, I agree with Rachel. It's like the, it, the fact that they give you this whole none of which, you know, this is a, an important segue or yeah, an they, important piece of information to, to let us know that this is binomial because my gut reaction would be 60 people that you invite, they got to know, some people got to know each other, right? So if John yeah. doesn't come, there's a decent chance that because Karen is his girlfriend, you know, or whatever, she's not coming, right? So, um, yeah, this and is, also like the and yeah, and the eighty percent is showing up too. Like it doesn't change um, exactly by the you know the number of people. Yeah, right? they went yeah. out of their way to tell you that's independent. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably not the most it's probably not the most realistic party situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it seems to me like highly unlikely you would know sixty people, none of whom know each other, and you know, but. Yeah. Or like and by the way, I mean, don't just like look up someone like, oh, who is, you know, Jeff this or whatever the hell, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to talk about, um, you know, I, don't, I, I didn't really uh, prepare anything else uh, in terms of slides and, and whatnot. At least I don't think so. Let me see. Um, my screen's still showing up. Yep. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I did add this this one. Uh, so uh, this is just what we saw on that page. And I um, so Edward is trying to prove to Bella that vampires exist. Bella thinks there's a fifty or 0.05 percent or um, a five percent, you know, point zero five probability that vampires exist. She also believes that the probability that someone can sparkle like a diamond if uh, vampires exist is. 0.7 and the probability that some, someone can sparkle like a diamond if vampires don't exist is 0.03. This is a very weird question. I, don't, it, I, I haven't seen, I, I don't think I've ever seen Twilight. Is sparkling like a diamond part of the whole process? I don't even know why this is the thing. Um, yes. I mean, Edward, I've seen, but I've seen the previous. <laughs> As a yeah. former teenage girl, yes. I know. I mean, you guys, you, you, you young folks, you should know, you got to help us out here because I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. Um, okay, Edward then goes into a meadow and shows Bella he can sparkle like a diamond. Given that Edward sparkled like a diamond, what is the probability of that vampires exist, right? So what's our prior? Well, first of all, what, yeah, so first of all, we're, um, what's, what, what are we trying to solve for here? Is it not that we're trying to figure out the probability th that vampires exist given the model, which is, you know, or like in this case, it would be like our pie, right? That, that you know, the spark given the status th of sparkling like a diamond. Is that not what we're looking for? Correct. Yeah. Probability okay. of vampires given sparkled. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so um, what's our. What's our priors? Um, five. Priors. Five percent. That well, five percent yeah. that vampires exist. Yeah. Yeah. So it's point zero five. Even add this in just so we get some kind of visuals. And then <laughs> what is um, what's the likelihood? So it's seventy zero point seven is the likelihood. Um, that given a vampire that he would sparkle, right? So basically, okay, so uh, the probability that someone can spark. So this is really, yeah, so it, it's, it's, 
isn't it weird that they use the word probability? Is this one of the things that bugs me about likelihood? Is like I think we still end up using probability. Is this not the likelihood statement? Well, don't forget that likelihood is just the probability flipped on flipped with the condition that the two things right. flipped over, right? So the pro the probability that someone can sparkle if vampires exist is 0.7. That also means that the likelihood that vampires exist if someone sparkles like a diamond is 0.7. That's not probability anymore, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, and then what about the normalizing uh, constants? So you now you got to add the two possibilities, right? So one of them you have 0 0.05 times 0 0.7, then you got to add the other possibility, which is the 0.95 um, times 0 0.03, right? Right. Yeah, and actually, I'll just you know because um, well, uh, I'll, I'll show you all the. Uh, can you still see my my screen yes. here? All right. Uh, so this actually is. I'll. Uh, I'll even. Oh, put okay. This, oh, I'll, I'll even put this in the uh, the Slack. Um, Which this hack is, can be? I, I don't know. Just some. You know, this is a common okay. thing for a lot of these types of R books. Is you know, uh, using like having like somebody does the extra work here of of this. Oh. So, so okay. So this is interesting, right? So so we're we're trying to figure out the 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 the. Um, normalizing constant, right? And so this this was confused. I don't know if anyone else found this confusing. Maybe this isn't correct or not, I don't know. So we need to get the, the, the normalizing constant, which is the sum of sparkling while being a vampire plus the probability of sparkling without being a vampire. Um, yeah, that's how I wrote it too, is probably sparkling overall, the total probability of sparkling. Right, because we want in the denominator, the probability, yeah. you know, the, the total probability of whatever the you know the model provide i mean the basically the model is, that we're proposing is is that sparkling has some you know uh, association with vampire status right so yeah um so yeah so all we're doing here is putting the the, the multiplying 0.7 which is um make sure i understand this okay yeah so the you can sparkle like a diamond if vampires exist is 0.7 uh, times 0.5 and then plus 0.03. Okay, so yeah, this is the this is the the this p underscore s is you know merely the um, you know the denominator. So and why do we need that? Because we want um, to make sure that you know we can sum all of our uh, stuff at the end to one. So are there any other like I don't, I don't want to just like sort of run the show here. Um, were there any other sort of uh, questions or like problems that people wanted to work on or, or whatever? No. Is that is that problem clear to everybody? Like what was going on in that last one though? Any... Yeah, what's the answer then? Oh, um, 55%. Is <laughs> it 55%? Yeah, yeah. That's what I got. That's like screw something up. Yeah, I didn't actually do the math. Sorry, I just uh, yeah. <laughs> so we got it. Yeah. Yeah, I just I, I feel like I found I found the, the cheat sheet, so I feel like I, my, my my work is done here, <laughs> right? That's is not the way it always goes, right? So yeah, so it's uh, whatever. They didn't do the math either. They just wrote the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. Yeah. So basically, at the end, we're we're we're. Um, we're, we're we're trying to like figure out okay so given that Edward you know sparkled sparked or sparkled um, whatever um, probability of of um, vampires existing is um, actually well I'm not even going to uh, do the math um, but yeah so still you know a little bit I you know I'll be honest with you one of the things that um, is confusing to me is I don't know I, I I'm you know like so the 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 Kasparov question or the or the example is is weird right so we start out with this like sort of prior prior probability or, or um I should say likelihoods that you know he's gonna win any game is you know the pi is equal to 0 0.2 0 0.5 and all this stuff but I don't know how often we really have that kind of information I mean I guess we can always estimate it or whatever but it's really hard to take like really hard to think about likelihood and probability together um i don't know if anyone's had that sensation but like you know it's like 
okay, given that, you know, the, the pi was 0.2, what's the, you know, the uh, probability that, you know, he'll only win one game, you know, I mean, it's like, I don't know. It's just, it's weird, I guess, to think like that. Yeah, I think these artificial examples sometimes can be a little bit funny. You know, yeah. when you actually get into some of the real examples, like, oh, what's estimating the probability underlying a binomial model? Well, the likelihood is the binomial model. So that's, that's hard to understand. Yeah, we're assuming it's a binomial, right? So yeah. We want to know what the probability in is pi. We're going to try to figure it out from our, yeah. from our measurements of the, of the count or something, right? So... In that case, the yeah. likely it's kind of straightforward. It's just a binomial uh, probability distribution. Yeah, yeah. And these other um, cases are just making stuff up, right? Oh, prob why is the probably sparkling seventy percent? Nobody, you know, whatever. It's just, yeah. But yeah, no. It might have been clear if they made that one or something, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, all vampires um, sparkle. <laughs> what's that? They should have made it one because all vampires sparkle. <laughs> oh, is that right? I don't even know. I, know. I, this is... I don't know if that's true. I'll just say it would be easier yeah. to justify, right? Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, this, I'm sure this will get better as we, we move forward and sort of start thinking about, you know, estimating, you know, what our priors are. And, um, you know, obviously um, we don't have perfect information. I think, that's, I think that's one of the things that, you know, a lot of frequentists like to bring up is, you know, the, the um, the sub the perceived subjectivity of somebody doing this stuff, but then again, it's like you know the frequentists have their own problems they have to, they don't want to address either. So you know it's um, neither of these is perfect, but um, yeah, this is starting to actually sway me a little bit. I don't know. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out how I would do this in my own work because I work with a lot of like medical people. They don't. A lot of them don't really get what Bayesian. I mean, they hear about it, but they don't necessarily know what is, um, what it's good for. So, but it is interesting to think about it instead of just being a frequentist to think about having some kind of prior that you cut, that you estimate. And there's lots of increasingly more objective ways of doing that prior estimation. Have you run into any of that? Anybody like how people estimate their priors in papers or anything? Yeah, there's a whole. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, art to this whole prior thing. Use a lot of times the prior turns out it doesn't it washes out. I think this book may go into this somewhat, but you know we get enough data the prior actually doesn't matter. You can do something sensitivity like this. How much did my prior affect my 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 final results and stuff like that? Um, yeah. Then there's like the max. You know there's there's like uh, there's like you know back to what do you call it? Bayesian? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Maximum entropy priors. You know maximum uncertainty priors. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, Usually, uh, the papers I've seen, people are generally just trying to show, oh, this is the prior we use, and we also tried some other priors to see that the results didn't depend that strongly on what we did there. Yeah. Other reasonable priors, I guess I would say. You know, there's also unreasonable priors. It would affect your results, but yeah. Yeah, I see that. Um, like if my prior is very, very sharply peaked at one probability, then it's going to be hard to budget off of there, but it's very broad. There's, the, the data is going to quickly shape that up into a closer to the, whatever we think the underlying truth is. Yeah. Um, it should be covered in this book, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I think in the beta binomial chapter, it's gonna, you're going to see a very concrete you know, example of how this works in practice. And I think it becomes clear. Yeah. Hopefully. I agree. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually I'm running out of time. I got to like oh. jump onto something at a uh, four, quarter till. But uh, I th before you jumped on, Ron, I, I think uh, Rachel bravely volunteered to, to do chapter three, or at least to start it. I'm, I was just actually looking at it right now to see if it is, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's the same length as chapter two. So if you only want to go through, I don't know, if you, wanna, if you can try to do the whole thing, that's cool. But if you only get through half, that's, that's what I did anyway. So um it does look like you know it, it does look like it gets cooler as we move on because then there's like these sort of more specific or, or you know concrete kind of examples of different types of models that, um... yeah i'll do my best yeah awesome. do your best yeah. <clears throat> did you already sign up in the excel thingy i haven't gotten to that yet but i can do it after this meeting yeah. okay perfect yeah good, good. Um, anything else that I, I forgot to touch? I mean, I, you know, I, uh, 
I could, you know, we could have done probably other exercises and stuff, but um, anything else that uh, I would is, suggest if has anyone else done any of the exercises? I mean, I, I, I just I've yeah, done them so. sort of casually. So if anyone at this point has questions on any exercise, feel free to jump in or otherwise you could just, you know, you can certainly also bring, um, if you go through the exercise and you go, oh, this, I don't get this part, you can certainly do it on Slack too. Just, you know, post on yeah. that phase rule Slack and say, hey, this exercise is confusing or whatever, yeah. or did I, or this is what I got and I'm not convinced of it or whatever, you know? Yeah. Anyway, I got to run, but- um, Okay, thanks for presenting I will, this. I'll see you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'll see you guys you. Uh, next week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. See you next week, Ryan. Bye. Bye, guys.